Okay. So you mm-hmm. had explained to me that when we give people more stem cells, introducing it into the blood, uh, there's a tendency for these cells to go back to the bone marrow. Maybe you can explain a little bit um, why would these cells want to do that? What happens when a person gets a stem cell injection? Well, stem cells go back to the bone marrow, and that is very well documented. The best example uh, to answer that question is just to talk about what happens when somebody gets a bone marrow transplant. So let's say you have leukemia or someone has leukemia. The treatment is myeloablation through radiation or chemotherapy. You kill all the stem cells, and then we inject use stem cells, bone marrow stem cells from a compatible donor, but we don't inject them in the bone marrow. We just put them in the blood. They will go in the bone marrow on their own. They're attracted to the bone marrow. They will go to an injury and in lieu of finding an injury, they will go back in the bone marrow because the bone marrow releases a signal like an injury, but all the time. So that's how you repopulate the bone marrow. And you give it just a few weeks and the entire bone marrow is reconstituted. So stem cells that are injected in the bloodstream will go to the bone marrow. There's no question about that. So the the advantage of umbilical cord stem cells in terms of injection is that we know that younger stem cells are much better than older stem cells. Adipose stem cells have a little caveat in the sense that they're not as old, if you want, as bone marrow stem cells, but the youngest are definitely umbilical cord stem cells. So you take an injection, that means you recede your stems, your bone marrow with young stem cells. So you are 50, 60 years old, and now you carry in your bone marrow. And by carry, it's not the right word. It's more than carry. You have now a a source of stem cells, pockets of stem cells that have just restarted their life cycle in you, in your bone marrow, but they're young stem cells. So they're more powerful to repair. By more powerful, what I mean is that studies were done where if you take, let's say, a middle-aged mouse, and you you trigger an injury, and then you inject in that mouse stem cells uh, isolated from a one-day-old mouse or a 12-month mouse, which is an old mouse. And the younger stem cells are much more effective at supporting repair. Um, so, so that's what I mean by, by using uh, younger stem cells. Where the two combined with stem regen is that I believe, and this is, at this point, it is just a hypothesis. We see the result. We know that combining them gives better results. So, so why? So we would have to go into a lot of studies to really document all of that. But if we step back and we look at the physiology of stem cells, which I described somewhat earlier with this connection with CXCR4 and FDF1, when stem cells circulate in, the, in, in your blood vasculature, the only place where they can migrate is in a very, very small area of your blood vasculature that is called the post-capillary venule. It's when a capillary ends and starts the, the vein or the venule. The main difference is that your capillary have muscles around them to control pressure, and your venules, your small veins, do not have that. So that means at that junction, there's a sudden shut a decrease in blood pressure. So like water going from a river to a lake, a calm lake, what is happening right there at the entrance at that junction? You get a lot of turbulence. The turbulence at, at, at that junction is the mechanical signal for L-selectin to mechanically be affected and trigger the expression of the CXCR4 receptor. That now makes the stem cells listen to, do I have SDF1 released in that area? So that means the tissue needs repair. So if so, there's connection, adhesion molecule, the stem cell grab the capillary, migrate in that tissue. That area is a fraction of your entire blood circulation. So the opportunity that stem cells have to go in that area and that can become quickly saturated when you inject, let's say, 100 million stem cells. So that means the vast majority will just be pulled back in the bone marrow. So now if you inject, let's say, 100 million stem cells, you have about, at our age, we have about maybe, maybe I'm aging you when I say our age, (laughs) probably a little bit older, Uh, but we probably have, let's say, 100 million stem cells in our bone marrow. So you inject 100 million, if they, let's suspect here, the majority go back to the bone marrow, you've now doubled your population of stem cells in your red marrow. 
So now your red marrow that supports the life of 100 million stem cells supports the life of 200 million stem cells. The estimated survival of stem cells just through an injection, not a lot of studies have been done on it, but the estimated the estimation is maybe like 15 to 20% survival. And I think that that's why they get a lot of them just do not have the nutrition, the oxygenation, all the support to stay alive. Now add on this stem regen that does one simple, very simple thing. It triggers the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. So you take these stem cells and you put them back in circulation, where now they get another opportunity to migrate in tissues and repair. Now do this, let's say twice a day in the month or two following the injection. And you just magnify what was offered through the injection. I believe that this is the mechanism of action of combining the two the two techniques together, stem cell injection and stem regen. So we're starting to do some studies to, to document this phenomenon, but we're a dietary supplement company. You know, studies are expensive. Um, but but that's what I believe is happening. So these cells, when they all go back to the bone marrow, um, and the bone marrow has trouble sustaining all these cells. So somehow that, there's just not enough nutrients or... I'm suspecting here that when you have a niche in the body that is supporting any kind of cells anywhere in your body, if you suddenly double the number of cells in that area, it needs, in order to, to be str strong and healthy, you need to have better blood circulation, better blood supply, better nutrient su supply, oxygen supply. I mean, it, it, it comes with it. You don't get that within a few hours of a stem cell injection. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm just thinking you start to stress the tissue and over time, it's probably one of the mechanism for the low survival rate of injected stem cells. I believe that that's how it works. Now, one thing to add into the whole story that I told you, uh, when I say younger stem cells are better, that statement, which is true, I think has been misconstrued in the general message that I hear a lot on YouTube and many places, which is therefore past 40 years old, your stem cells are worthless. And, and it's important to mention that the study that I just described on congestive heart failure, all of these patients were between 65 and 75 years old. And just on stem regen, they got quite a bit of, of, of recovery. So at any age, at any time in your life, in any age, if you can put more of your stem cells, whatever they are, whatever are effective they are, your body will utilize them for tissue repair. Now, if you can include to that younger stem cells, then you just boost the whole process. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. So when you get them out of the bone marrow and back into the circulation, you think they will have a lot better chance of getting the proper nutrients and, and actually survive better. Well, they get back in a place that is well oxygenated, which is your, you know, your arterial blood, uh, where there's nutrients and where they have another opportunity at migrating in the tissue. Because at the end of the day, what you monitor and what anybody monitors is the quality of life of the patient. As you recirculate a lot of these stem cells, then you basically slowly give more opportunity for that tissue to absorb some of them and then just repair and, and, and be better.